Hi, well, so many feeders to choose from these days when you go into a tackle shop, like everything, you know, floats, baits, feeders, there's so many, and it, I'm guessing it can get quite confusing for anybody, let alone beginners. So I'm just going to take a few minutes just to explain uh, why we need these different types of feeders and what, what they're all designed for. Feeder fishing is quite simple, really. Primarily, it's just to put an amount of bait and by ac in, into inside the feeder and by accurately casting it to the same spot every time, we you know we make a small area where we concentrate the fish, uh, and then we have our hook bait very close to the feeder. That's the essence of feeder fishing. Very very simple. And really, the construction and the design of the feeders are very very simple as well. This is the classic feeder we have here, which is just a canister uh, of solid plastic with a side lead, which is designed for this, this particular feeder is about 44 gram, an ounce and a half. It's a river style feeder. Um, that will be, that will hold on the bottom in one place. And that side lead will stop the feeder from rolling around. So if we've got a moderate flow, not too heavy a flow, but a moderate flow, that will hold bottom in one place instead of skipping around all over the river if we're fishing too light a feeder. So that's why we need a feeder with a side lead and a feeder that's heavy enough just to sit on the bottom in one place. And that just comes from experience in the river as to how strong the flow is going to be and matching it with the right size of feeder. That's why we need different weights of feeder. A very similar product is a cage feeder, again with a side lead. Now the main difference between these two, as you can see, it, this is more open. Once we get feed inside this, it's more open to the water getting inside the feeder. So if, if I just quickly fill that feeder full of ground bait, nice ground bait and the ground bait would normally have uh, some food content some particles in it like maggots and casters that sort of thing um, with the cage feeder when we cast that into the water the water can get into that cage feeder and loosen it very very quickly therefore uh, it takes very small amount of time to empty and that's good for shallow water uh, where we don't want the bait to be locked inside the feeder for very long. Shallow water it will also cloud on the way down um, but it might be it might empty too much on a deep lake or on a deep river. It might come out too quickly and all that food is getting lost in the flow and going you know going away from our uh, intended area and so in that instance we might be better off with the solid body which traps the feed for that little bit longer a few more seconds before the water can get in and loosen it so that's the difference between why we might need a solid body and a cage feeder apart from that everything is the same really so it's just that choice between the two now the variation on let's just take the cage feeder for a moment the variation on this having that side lead is perhaps when we're fishing a still water where we want to cast a long long way long range let's say beyond 50 meters or if we're fishing when the wind is a little bit strong you know and we want the feeder to cut through it now the, having the lead down the side is all very well but it's not the most aerodynamic shape so this is when the rocket feeder comes into play which is exactly the same feeder but instead of having the lead loaded on the side it has it on the nose now I think you'll agree that reminds you of something it reminds you of a you know a rocket a dart something like that that's completely streamlined and the weight at the front makes it fly through the air very accurately even in a strong like side wind or headwind and um, so it flies very accurately and much faster than a normal feeder so on 
the days we want to really hit the horizon and I'm talking you know beyond 50 meters 60 70 80 meters or even more sometimes that's the feeder we want to be on um, but of course at the same time we haven't got the uh, we haven't got the side lead to stop it rolling so this in a flow would roll you can imagine roll easily down the river so not really a river feeder except maybe on a one with a really really slow flow it's more of a still water lake pond uh, type feeder um, where you want to get a little bit more accurate and, and fish at longer range the other variation of the cage feeder or maybe the solid body is when we want to fish with a very short hook length a bit like fishing the method but using a you know a, a, a normal feeder we can still fish like fishing the method with a very short tail now instead of having the uh, attachment here where our main line would come to and then we'd have a separate hook length the variation of using the normal feeder against the inline feeder is when we want to put the line right through this tube which runs at the back of the lead there there's a tube at the bottom of the cage itself that we can put our main line through there out the bottom and then finish it off with a swivel and then we can tie a very short hook length this is only about less than 100 millimeters uh, 10 centimeters long and finish it off with a hook and maybe even a hair rig and we can then present our bait very very close to the feeder so on them days where you know we're fishing for aggressive fish like carp, tench, bream um, whether it's a still water or a river really where the fish are coming we're confident that they're coming right up to the feeder and a, a more or less attacking the feeder we don't want our bait like two two three feet away we want it right near the feeder and and fishing an inline feeder is the best easiest way of doing that you can imagine a fish coming up nose in that feeder and then look oh our bait is just there and then we get a bite and uh, and we're away that's another variation of uh, the ordinary cage feeder a variation between the first one I'll show you which was the open ender is the block ender where everything is the same the body the lead is the same but this time it has a cap at each end and this is where rather that rather than using a ground bait or a pellet mix uh, this is for you know particle feed like maybe pellets dry pellets hemp casters things like that where we want to uh, feed them loose instead of in ground bait if I just show you a pot of particles here these caps are joined together with an elastic bungee very tough bungee and so we can just fill them to our heart's content like that just pop the cap back on and there we are fishing again with a lovely feeder full of loose loose bait that will slowly be spread with the flow of the river knocking it in out of those holes we can actually put some more holes in at our own uh, at our own discretion if they if we're fishing live bait like mag like maggots they'll obviously crawl out as well but mainly it's the flow of the river that will push that bait out into the current so that's a, that's the variation of a feeder block end feeder traditionally used by barbel anglers on on fast rivers like the Trent and the Severn very very popular where we don't always want to use cereal ground bait but we want to use more um, loose feed basically okay so there we have it sort of basically two different types of feeder but two or three variations on the basic and if you have those little array of feeders with you really you've got a feeder for every occasion